Right, this is part three in the introduction to vectors. This time we're going to talk about the dot product. All right, so the dot product of two vectors is a real number. It's not going to give you another vector back, it's just going to give you a real number. All right, so if you take vector u, which is ab, and vector v, which is cd, then the, the dot product of u and v is defined the following way. Vector u dot vector v, that's how you read that, and that's equal to a times c plus b times d. So you take the two horizontal components, multiply them together, the two vertical components, multiply those together, and add them up. And that's the dot product. So for example, say you had so u dot v. Then that would equal negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8, plus 3 times 1, which is 3, and so you would get negative 5. That's the real number we're talking about. Okay. So the dot product, that simple. Negative 2 times 4 plus 3 times 1. Add them up, get a number. Now there are some properties of the dot product, and they are as follows. For all vectors u, v, and w, and let's let k be a real number, then u dot v should be the same thing as v dot u. Everybody kind of sees that, right? And then 2 and 3 here, they're like the vector versions of the distributive property, so to speak. Right, u dot v plus w goes to u dot v plus u dot w, and then the other way around here, um, you know, w goes to u and w goes to v. And you dot that out. So they're similar to the to the distributive property. For here, now we've got a, a scalar times a vector, and that would give us another vector, right? And then when we dot that with vector v, you get some scalar. Well, that's the same thing as if you take the two vectors u and v, dot them together, and then get that number and multiply that number times the scalar. Or if you take the scalar and uh, do the scalar multiplication of it with the vector v, get a new vector, and then dot that with vector u, uh, you'll get the same number. So it doesn't really matter you know, which, where the scalar goes. All right? And then number five here, vector zero. Yeah, there's a zero vector. That's where all the components would be zero, right? So if you take the zero vector and dot it with any other vector, you're always going to get zero back, right? Okay. All right, number six down here, it's kind of useful. If you take a vector and dot it with itself, that's the same thing as getting the magnitude of the vector and squaring it. Can everybody see that? Say u is a, b, then that would be a squared plus b squared. Right? And then the magnitude of u would be the square root of a squared plus b squared. But when you squared that, you'd get rid of the square root. Right? You'd be left with just the a squared plus b squared. So yeah, that, that's a true statement too. All right, so those are the properties of the dot product. Um, um, you don't need to memorize them, but you know they'll just kind of happen naturally. All right, so now let's look at a triangle. All right, so let's say down here is the origin, and this angle in between them here we're going to call theta. Now, does everybody agree if we take u and do negative u, would put you down here, right? And then if we took that vector and moved it up, it would be back here, just being reversed. Everybody agree that would be minus u. Okay, if we did that, then this vector right here would be the minus u. And the way you get v minus u is do the opposite of u, right? And they add up to be v minus u. All right, so what do we have now? We have, we have a triangle. And we can figure out the length of this side, that would be the magnitude of u. We can figure out the length of this side, that would be the magnitude of v. And we can figure out the length of this side, which would be the magnitude of v minus u. Okay, we've got this angle theta in the middle here. So by the law of cosines, we would have the following. The magnitude of v minus u squared plus the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. That's just the law of cosines. Right, where this length squared is equal to this length squared plus this length squared minus two times those two lengths times the cosine of the angle in between them. Right. Now we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. All right. So from our property we had a minute ago, the magnitude of v minus u squared can go to v minus u dot v minus u. Right. That's just dotting itself, and then by the distributive property ones over there, we could take these two things and kind of like foil it out, so to speak, when we had binomials. It's not really 
officially called that, but that's what that's what it looks like. And then v dot v goes to the magnitude of v squared. These two things right here, you have, they're exactly the same, so you have two of them, so minus two u dot v, and then u dot u goes to the magnitude of u squared. Does everybody agree that left side? We're just leaving the right side alone right now. The left side is going to that. But now when we get down to this stage right here, we notice that the magnitude of v squared is on the left, the magnitude of v squared is on the right, and the magnitude of u squared is on the left, and there's another magnitude of u squared on the right. And those are just going to be numbers, right? Well, they subtract out, and you're left with negative 2 times u dot v is equal to negative 2 times the magnitude of u, magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. And then if you take this right here and isolate cosine of theta, you get cosine of theta to be u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. We just started with a triangle, we used the law of cosines, the little bit of algebra with some vector properties, and we got this little thing down here at the bottom. This is actually an important formula, and this is the proof of how we get this important formula down here. And this formula is called the angle between two vectors. So if theta is the angle between two non-zero vectors, u and v, and theta is between 0 and 180 degrees, then cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. All right, so an example of how to use that would be, all right, find the angle between 4, 3, and 3, 5. Well, there are three things we need to find. First one being u dot v, and u dot v is going to be equal to 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 3 times 5, which is 15, so that's 27. We also need to know the magnitude of u. The magnitude of u would be equal to the square root of 16 plus 9, which equals the square root of 25, which equals 5. The magnitude of v, which equals the square root of 9 plus 25, which equals the square root of 34. All right, so now we can say, all right, the cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And that's equal to u dot v was 27. The magnitude of u is 5 and the magnitude of v is the square root of 34. Use your calculator to find the arc cosine of that, and that would give you theta to be, when we get 22.16 degrees. So the angle between those two vectors is 22.16 degrees. That might be kind of important to know, right? Okay, so that's that's using the angle between two vectors formula. That's one of those that you should know, right? It's not too bad. It's, a, it's an application of the dot product, right? We can use the dot product to help us figure out the angle between two, two vectors, which brings me to a note. Let theta be the angle between two non-zero vectors u and v. So theta is an acute angle if the dot product, u dot v, is a positive number, okay? Like we just had a second ago. If the dot product is equal to zero, then you'd have the cosine of theta is equal to zero, and so that would be, theta would be 90 degrees, right? So theta is 90 degrees. If the dot product is negative, then you'd have the cosine of theta equal to negative numbers. That would put you over in quadrant two, and so theta would be an obtuse angle. So just by knowing whatever the dot product is between two vectors, we, um, we have an idea of, what the, of if the angle is acute, 90 degrees, or obtuse. Now there is one more word I want to introduce. The vectors u and v are orthogonal if and only if u dot v is equal to zero. Now remember, when u dot v is equal to zero, then theta was 90 degrees. So this word orthogonal, it's really just a fancy math word for perpendicular. So two vectors are orthogonal, which means perpendicular, if and only if the dot product between the two vectors is zero. So the angle was a 90 degree angle. Okay, so orthogonal is the new word. All right, that's it for the introduction of vectors. Um, study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.